between neighboring countries, some more distant neighbors across Europe, some large, some small wars, some long, some, some short wars. And people were basically fed up with this situation. They wanted to put an end to war. What, what was the best way in the, in the minds of the six countries at the heart of Europe was to form a union in terms of power, coal, and a union in terms of the main means of production, steel. So the European coal and steel community was formed in 1951, and it became a European economic community in 1958, with these six countries. At the same time, Britain didn't want to join that, for various historical reasons, and these other countries also, for various historical reasons, didn't want to join the European community, the EEC, or the European coal and steel community. And then the European community expanded. Uh, 1973, the UK and Ireland and Denmark, which have been part of the Outer Seven, decided we have to join this. It's ridiculous having one strong core in Europe and another competing core for free, for free trade around the periphery. Greece in 1981, and then these other countries, as you can see, so there's a total of 2007, uh, 2007 a total of 27 countries. But this development, Whereas formerly you could say it's fairly homogeneous, you've got Western European countries that were fairly industrialized, and obviously the differences in their industrialization focus, for example, on industry in Germany, agriculture in France, well, that's a bit of a, a simplification, but that, that difference is there. Um, and then you've got Greece, which is very different in its, in, in its personality, um, Portugal and Spain, also very different. And then as you come into 2004, we're seeing these countries that were formerly part of the Eastern Bloc, quite poor economically, lacking in economic and, and industrial development, and also with very different cultures and very different linguistic associations recently and in the past. That, that created a, a very complex situation in Europe. Um, and one of the complications is this complexity of administration. If you go to Brussels, Half of this massive city seems to be the European community buildings, and which take up an enormous budget and take up a forest every day in terms of all the publications in all the different languages. Huge logistical challenges in keeping the administration going. 